a socialist to serve openly in the government. Hey, hey listen, and, the, the, and, French, the French have been very open about a lot of things. I mean, you could probably marry your dog if you want to in France. <laughs> Well, well, again, uh, Mark, what I, were you I, saying? I don't, I don't think, think that, that has anything to do with, with, this, with, with socialism or socialistic because it's socialistic. Well, social- but, but, but the purpose of the socialist is to allow, is to give the state complete power over every facet of life. And uh, that's what I'm saying is that in socialist countries where, where the socialists have a lot of influence, they, you know, when it comes to these social issues, when it's dealing with sexuality or race, they 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 are going to push what they believe to be forms of equality, no matter what. And they would pressure institutions like the church to adapt to what their philosophies are. Well, you're talking you're talking about socialism. I mean, let's look at Israel. Israel is a perfect example of a democratic socialistic state. All right, if you so choose, you can live on a kibbutz, which is communal living, where everybody shares, okay, uh, or you can live, you know, the way most people live. But the bottom line is, uh, Orthodox, Orthodox Judaism will frown upon and condemn same-sex marriage, but in their society, in conservative and reformed Judaism, you know, they may say, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, now some rabbis may say, no, I wouldn't perform a service. Others may say yes. But the, so I think the only problem you're going to find is really in the Catholic Church. The book comes out of religion. That doesn't come out of, you know, styles of government. That's coming out of the religion itself. And the state of Israel is more of a religious state where, you know, you do have a democratic government. But that is more of that is more of a religious state than anything. Actually, and, but, Israel but, but is but less religious than is, we are. But the whole thing, is, huh? Israel is less yeah. religious than the United States. Yeah. But but uh, but what but what I'm saying is that you know you have a democratic government, but what I'm but the whole concepts of Zionism and other concepts that you have in the government. That is coming out of the religion. So that's why I'm saying that the state of Israel is a religious state because they are trying to protect the state for people who are Jewish. So, you know, it, so its basic purpose is, is kind of centered around that religion. No, it's the, it's the orthodoxy. It's the orthodoxy that want to keep Israel a Jewish state. If you... They did a survey right now of the average citizen in Israel. What they want is peace. They are tired of 60 years of constant warfare. Okay? Now, I'm not even talking about declared wars. I'm talking about skirmishes and killings and kidnappings and, you know, atrocities like that. Uh, where, you know, the children of, of uh, both Palestinians and Jews are afraid to wander too far from their home because they may get abducted and killed. And that goes for both sides. Uh, what they decide to do, you know, I have my own ideas, but uh, they will have to come to grips with that. You know, but well, but the whole thing is that the Palestinians are religious too, and they believe a lot of the sites in Jerusalem belong to them. And if you have to divide the state between the two groups, it's going to be divided based on those religious sites. I mean, that's the whole thing with the Dome of the Rock. That's one of the most religious sites in Israel. Except for one thing. The Dome dome of the Rock was originally Solomon's Temple. Okay, Islam built the Dome of the Rock uh, right on top of Solomon's Temple. So who's going to, you know, I mean, really, there are arguments on both sides for that one. You know. Right. Uh, so but what's really happening over there is you have a war between two religions. And so if the state is divided, it's going to be divided based on those two religions and what sites they believe belong to them. So, you know, that goes beyond just, you know, different types of government. You, you're basically dealing with, you know, 
things dealing that they think are holy and things that are religious in nature. And that's where the whole skirmish comes from. So that's why I'm saying that's more that's more of a war, you know, that's between Islam and uh, Jews that's going over uh, that's well, going on over have, in Israel. You also have a very big uh, Catholic contingent in Israel as well. You have, you have the Eastern Orthodox yeah. Church began there. Right, right. You have the Greek Orthodox on yeah. most of the Christian sites. Yeah, exactly. So do you think do you think here in the United States that the solution to this is that a new religion is formed? Well, that's what's happening in terms of uh L. Ron Hubbard and the Scientology and uh -huh. New Age religions. These 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 are all things that have popped up recently because people are looking for alternatives of beliefs. Yep. Of so, belief. But 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 so I think uh, but but I think the new religion is going to be people's, you know, is going to be people's reliance on, on like aspects of humanism, and I think it's going to be secular humanism, which is going to predominate among a lot of the young people today. They they're going to be more agnostic than anything, and all churches are going to suffer because people basically don't want to support, you know. Things dealing with organized religion. They don't want to support organized religion anymore. I mean, they want to be more of people who are who recognize all religions and believe in some type of spiritual power, but but they don't want to be able to have to worship that particular power. You know, they probably be more. They probably are trying to be more of a spiritualist. You know, people. Who, you know, people who believe in. You know, uh, different beliefs that are more right. so, spiritual in so nature, state, but they don't have. Uh, but they don't so have. The state a, comes in and says, yeah, you know, you have, have civil theology. Yes, yeah, so the state comes in and says you have civil rights, you have human rights, you have all these rights that basically say you, you know, same-sex marriage is fine and 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 you know homosexuality is fine, and then those people say, okay, but we believe in God and we believe in Jesus and we believe in, you know whatever religion is we chose to believe in and and it it forms to your point it forms this this new religion and and maybe that's maybe that's what we need maybe that's the next step in our well, human well, it might growth. be it might be another you know evolution it might evolve to that but i want to get back to something that that john said earlier i was trying to get a word in edgewise and i i, I couldn't squeeze in um, sorry no 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was enjoying the conversation you were having with John, but I, I couldn't get a word in. Talking about female priests and uh, the fact that in various sects of the Catholic Church uh, that women are ordained and can perform uh, services, just like in Judaism, while not in the orthodoxy, but in uh, Reform Judaism, we have female rabbis Going back to the days of Christ, as John said, most, if not all, of the uh, of the um, disciples were married and had families. Okay, and we only see the disciples leaving their families and following Christ and preaching, and it's not until after the death of Jesus that they take their families and they go to various sections of the world preaching. Now, they have their families, okay? Um, the earliest church, the priests were allowed to marry. The Pope was allowed to marry. The Pope had concubines. Not just, he, he wasn't just married, he had women on the side. Okay, I mean, that was, you know, the origin of uh, Friends with Benefits. Uh, but in those days, the papacy was void. It wasn't voted on by the uh, College of Cardinals. So, Jesus never said anything about not marrying. And also, don't forget the importance of Mary Magdalene to the early church and to the disciples. Okay? Um, Mary was very important. 
Uh, I'm not going to go into the various Hollywood scenarios or Dan Brown of, um, you know, the fact that she was the vessel of Christ and that they married and had children or a child. Um, but it was the men in the New Testament who sort of, you know, wanted to put women in their place and say, look, you could... You can be sisters or nuns, you can be, and that way you are married to Jesus, the way a priest is married to, yeah, the priest being the father of the congregation, okay, he has no room for a family of his own because his congregation is his family, okay, but, you know, if Catholicism is going to continue, uh, it may have to adapt, and they may have to go back to the way it used to be, where you know, in order to bring more men into uh, the role of the priesthood, they may say, "Gee, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to be celibate. You don't have to give up the right to marry." Okay, and we already know of cases where we have homosexual priests, priests who have admitted to being in committed, and I'm not talking about pedophiles, I'm talking about priests who have admitted to being in uh, monogamistic relations with uh, another man. Okay? So, I mean, is it, is this, the future is going to be something to behold. Okay? And, and, that's, and Mark, that's what I was alluding to earlier about the interpretation of the Bible. Because when 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 we went to Rome, we you know there was a lot of that that we learned that you know what once upon a time they were married, and the possibility that Mary Magdalene was supposedly Jesus's wife or spouse is is a a very real possibility. So we don't know what what happened back then, and we don't know what's going to happen five hundred years or a thousand years or two thousand years from now. But I believe that because it's all left to interpretation, it, it will continue to evolve and change. And it's the reason, and, and, and the reason that it's left to interpretation is because the powers that be within the Catholic Church, bless you, as my mother would say, you sneeze to the truth. The, uh, the, the, the powers within the Catholic Church that want to keep women in their place, that want to keep Mary in her place, okay, uh, that, that's the reason that you don't have the gospel according to Mary, and the many gospels that have not been written into the New Testament because they are in, you know, dichotomous to what the New Testament states, okay? It leaves room for other interpretations and the, the Catholic Church is very slow to change, okay? Um, and, but as we are discussing now, uh, this may be something that may be forced upon them in some way, shape, or form, okay, with the uh, ruling of the Supreme Court in the spring. But as uh, Dr. Ben Carson said, once you go beyond the ethical right. definition of marriage as dictated by Christianity, you open the door up to other interpretations of what marriage is and who and what can be married. And, and you open the door up and you open the door up to things like bestiality. You open the door up to things like people being married to more than one woman, to different types of, you know, to different types of, like, all types of the, uh, of a uh, polygamy, but John, to, go to back, occur, go, go, John, uh, you go open back, the door go up back to, the to earliest, people to the, be engaged in all types of incestuous relationships, where you may have a first cousin, where you know the bloodline is very close. People want to marry their first cousins. Okay, people let me want to marry John, their sisters. John, let me let me address you know? some, let me address some of those. Okay, let me address some of those. Yeah. In the Old Testament, uh, as you have said, you know, many Jews had more than one wife. Okay? It was customary. 
Uh, well, and it's still present here in our, even in the United States. It's